once you have your safety gear, you then want to make sure you have everything you need. I have a flask where it will all wind up in the end. I have got my distilled water here in this nice beaker. I've got some scrap paper to use as weighing dishes. My sodium hydroxide pellets, any scoop you let to transfer them, and a gigantic cylinder that it's all going to wind up in. I, right here, a 500 ml cylinder. Remember, mix in the flask, measure in the cylinder, and a funnel that I will use to the whole thing. First thing I'm going to do now that I've made sure I have all my materials here is I'm going to make a weighing dish. Take the quarter sheet of paper, fold it diagonally once, fold it diagonally the other way. You're not folding the entire paper, you're just trying to make nice sharp corners, and then the excess becomes a flat that gets curled over. I might do a video about how to make that, but hey, that works right there. There's our nice weighing dish. I'm going to turn on my balance, give it a little bit of time for it to actually fully turn on. Once it reaches that 0, 0.00, I will put the dish on top of it, give it a second, zero it out so it ignores the weight of the dish. Now, as you can see, this scale has two decimal places, but I only need 4.0. This is good. It gives me a leeway. It gives me 3.95 to 4.04. .04. Either of those will round to 4.0, which is what I want. So it's good that we have this leeway. But before I weigh my chemical, I need to fill my cylinder about three quarters of the way with distilled water. So I will do that. Now ideally you would want there to be minimal splashing. But we're very early in this process so splashing isn't really a concern. This is not really error yet. We're not even close to this filling process. So I'm going to fill this to about 350. It doesn't have to be exact, just has to be somewhere in that neighborhood. This is where my pellets will go when they are done. I will transfer my funnel off of the cylinder onto the flask where it will wind up eventually and move this aside. Now, I need this to be about four. Sodium hydroxide pellets are in a sealed container. These pellets are dangerous. They're one of the most dangerous things that I allow students to hold on to. They're a very powerful base, meaning they dissolve flesh. So you really don't want this touching you, and you definitely don't want to put it in your mouth, your eyes, or your ears, as that would be horribly bad. Now, they also react with air, pulling the water out of the air and becoming monstrously more dangerous. So there's kind of a time limit when you open this. You can't sit there and dawdle because then it will start to react with the water in the air. So you need to move with not haste, but purpose. Don't panic, don't fret, but don't sit around and do nothing. So I need 4.0. My parameters are 3.95 to 4.04. .04. I open I use the scoopula, and I place some on the paper. 2.04, need more. Now 3.60, now i got to be careful. I only want to get like one at a time here. 3.93, oof, that's rough. And 4.1, uh-oh, that's too much. So I get the smallest one here. I'm going to get it. Now, in high school, we put them back into the dish. In college or in professional life, you don't do that. But we're publicly funded, so it goes back into the dish. We deal with the error as a result. I'm now at 3.98, which will round to 4.0. I'm good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add that to the flats. This flask, of course, should have already had the water in it, but I did not pour that in ahead of time, so I'm going to pour it in right now. Not really too big of a concern, but again, timing is everything. So I'm going to pour my sodium hydroxide pellets in. 
Notice they all went smoothly. They did not stick to the paper, which means I did that in time. And that is great. The paper will be disposed of. The balance can be turned off. And now we have to wait for this to dissolve. Now, you will probably not have time to wait. So you may, of course, swirl. Swirling adds kinetic energy and speeds up dissolving. I We will come back to that and see what happens. If we look back at the base, we can see that in this like 20 minutes or so, it has dissolved. Uh, at this point, we've got all of our sodium hydroxide has dissolved. So now we can finish up what we're doing here. We are going to put this back into our big cylinder. There's going to be some splashing, but that's okay because this whole thing is contained anyway. And now that we have the chemical added, we're going to top it off with distilled water to get to our 500 milliliters that we want. I'm going to look at this at eye level when it gets closer. Clear up some bubbles that are there. And we have it. It will then be transferred into the beaker, sorry, the flask for storage using the parafilm to seal it, to make it airtight. This is the known mix that you will test your chemicals off of come next week. Air film. Stretch. Stretch. Oh, that's it. Cut. And 